So here we are, sharing secrets of the soil, with me, your host, Regen Ray. Hello, soil lovers, Regen Ray here, and welcome to another episode of Secrets of the Soil. Today, you're going to get double the trouble because there's not just Regen Ray, but there is also another Ray joining me from all the way on the other side of the world, Ray Archuleta. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Ray. Uh, I already know you're brilliant because your name is Ray. No, just <laughs> biased. You know, I'm the same. <laughs> I'm very biased. I tell people I'm biased all the time. <laughs> yeah. Are you Raymond by long or just always Ray? Well, it's Raymond, really. Um, uh, my official name is Raymond, but I've always used Ray. So uh, I, every time I same. get called Raymond, I'm, I'm usually in trouble. <laughs> Same. That's exactly. I'm, I'm looking at a reflection right now. That's exactly. Mother, dad, call me Raymond when I'm in trouble or something's not gone right. And so, yeah, I've definitely Raymond on birth certificate, but Ray all my life. Um, and it's so great that both Rays are so in love with soil. You've been, you know, a big pioneer and someone who I've watched on YouTube endlessly doing all your demonstrations. You just have a real knack of articulating, you know, the way that soil's functioning that can be sometimes lost in this world of bio biological you know jargon mm. but you do a great way of doing demonstrations that really make sense and keep it logical how did you fall into this soil world and share with the listeners a little bit about how you became a soil lover thank you ray i appreciate that uh i don't know if the audience know just a little quick snippet i i started my career with the usda usda nrcs used to be called soil conservation service the agency was started because we were losing our soils in back in the thirties, uh, the whole Midwest and the Western part of the country was blowing into the East and we were having massive, massive losses of, of, of uh, soil. And I started my career in 1987 and started as in the, in the fundamental levels of uh, the agency started very low and worked my way up. I think, I think what, and I think when it resonated with me and, you know, and I went to school for soils, but I didn't know it was going to change my life as much as it did, Ray. And I think, I think the, the first epiphany was when I was living in Oregon, working in Oregon and Idaho. And I think what really bothered me was our water wasn't getting cleaned. Uh, our rivers and lakes were being filled with sediment and, and we were, you know, we were having algal blooms and animals were dying and, also, farmers and ranchers couldn't bring their sons and daughters into the operation. And I guess my first love and realization how powerful the soil was when I, after I read Ellen Savory's book on holistic management, that book really gave me a holistic context. And then two, I went to Gabe Brown's ranch and Gabe wrote book, uh, Dirt to Soil. And it was that year I go, oh, you idiot, you missed it. You missed it. It was really, I didn't have a holistic view. We missed about the most important thing in the soil, the, the organisms. Even though I went to graduate school for soils, they we talked about a lot about physics and chemistry and classes I really didn't like. But <laughs> I started reading into soil ecology. And I go, wow, not soil microbiology. That's different from soil ecology. Soil ecology is the top and the bottom inside. And it it was there I started falling and realized that if the soil is not healthy, if we don't have a healthy soil, we don't have a healthy plant, we don't have a healthy animal, we don't have a healthy human, we don't have a healthy climate, we don't have anything. It's the foundation resource. And I think that's what happened to me, Ray. It was a, it was a progressive re, uh, gradation, and it really started with uh, observing failure. We were failing, and I knew something was wrong. And I think that's what started me getting excited about soil. Yeah, so similar. I, I, I resonate with all that. And I think that's what a lot of people do. You used a very important word is like the power of soil. And I think, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, sparked to me is like, we, we have this resource underneath our feet that is so powerful. And yet we've been mm -hmm. very busy looking at deep oceans and, and Mars and the moon <laughs> and not stopping to pause and look down under our feet. And that, yeah. that blew my mind. And that's why I became a soil advocate and a spokesperson, I guess, for soil and, you know, then found that there's so many other people like yourselves championing this great message. Someone who's mm -hmm. experienced that, where do you think, where do you think we went off the, the path and kind of stopped treating soil for the life that it had and just as a, you know, dirt, you know? Well, good question, Ray. I think it really comes, I think if you go back 
that the creation of man, I think we've lost it. I thought, I, I think we, from the garden, of Eden, as soon as we got kicked out, we forgot relationship. I think we forgot that we were designed for relationship with the creation, with the animals, with everything else in it. I think that was the first phase. And I think, and then it got really bad in the 20th century, because if you look back through all of history, the Mayans, the native Americans, like where I grew up, uh, uh, there was about seven tribes and, and being part uh, native American myself, um, we overused the resources and we, we cut too much. We took too much and we weren't conscious about it. And then I think in the early fifties and sixties, chemical agriculture came in and we started treating uh, the soil like a, like a growing medium that it wasn't alive. And I think, so I think it's uh, two phases. I think our human nature all along had really no, uh, some groups of people did and some uh, races did, but as a cumulative, we've seen how destructive man has been on the planet. So I, I think it's been happening all along, but I think it got worse for my paradigm in modern agriculture with fertilizers, chemicals, and tillage, we just got more powerful with our tools and got more destructive. Yeah. Yeah. Fast track some of the results that were taking yeah. centuries to decades to cycles, you know, seasons basically. Yeah. Almost. yeah. I, I totally agree. I, I think that's why I've, I've seen that. Yeah. And I think technology also being able to join um, data from all around the world uh, and see, oh, you're experiencing that as well. Because one of the things... I experienced six or so years ago when I <clears throat> fell into the deep rabbit hole of soil is that the Americans were looking to what the Australians were doing and the Australians were looking to what the Americans were doing. And everyone wanted to know, you know, everyone over in America wanted to know what, you know, Charlie Massey was doing and Colin Sice and all those pioneers here mm -hmm. and, and, and Peter Andrews and everyone here was wanting to know what Gabe Brown was doing and, and yourself and everyone. So that curiosity of being able to actually realize, Oh, I'm not alone. Other people are struggling with this even in a completely different climate and, and start joining these dots of this common denominator of yeah. soil is depleting. Um, right. I, do, do you feel like we've hit the realization or say like the dip of it? And now it's, you know, this movement of regenerative is showing light that we are rebuilding and reconnecting and a lot of these like rewords. Um, do you, do you see that more and more people are waking up and, and realizing the importance of soil and with your feet on the ground, what are you feeling and experiencing in, in, in your I, world? I tell you, Ray, I'm so, I'm glad you asked that because I'm telling you, if you would have asked me 20 years ago, I was actually about forties, my forties, early forties, I'm 62. Now I had no hope. I had yeah. no hope for agriculture, none ship. And now I have an incredible amount of hope. It, it was kind of a synchronous thing that Colin Sice and my brothers and sisters of Australia were seeing the same problems and, and here in the United States. But it's, I, I think as a collective on the planet, we're seeing those same things because, you know, in the last year I've been in six continents, wow. six continents. And I see a movement, Ray, that is incredible. I see so much hope. Um, I see first time in my life, I see, um, magazines with soil biology in it. I see universities hiring and they were the worst here in the United States to kicked and scream, laughed, mocked, dismissed us. They're hiring soil health mm -hmm. specialists and they're bringing them in. And I see small universities teaching, using my videos or, or, uh, listening to Gabe's book or teaching the students. I am absolutely amazed that what's going on. Let me give you one more quick example. Venezuela. Yeah. I was asked to go speak in Venezuela. Now you think about Venezuela as a, a country that was very, they call it the Switzerland of, of South America and it's gone and it's diminished the political, but there's some amazing people like uh, 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 Jimenez, who is Gabriela Jimenez, who is the head of biology and technology and, and Andres Kiwaski, who Dr. Andres Kiwaski, who are creating this region movement in Venezuela. It's amazing. And can you imagine? I never thought that I would ever speak in front of the Venezuelan military and teach soil health, wow. soil biology, right? And I'm teaching the staff of the military and people. And in fact, Gabriela's mantra for the department is promote life. 
and now going, wow, and they're not allowing GMOs to come in, and they're trying to get away, reduce chemicals and fertilizer, and they're going to more organic-based fertilizers. And I'm just like, wow, Ray, this is happening in our lifetime. So I am, I'm really pumped up about where we're heading. Uh, I yeah. think we're finally got the, the mantra, and here's the mantra, emulate nature. Finally, we got the goal. What? what? How beautiful. Mimic nature. What a, what a simple concept. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I definitely, yeah. I think we're always looking for the ego to find the, the, the solution that was, you know, human devised and we created it and we won against nature, but really we just had to like move out of the way and, you know, let the soil be the solutions, um, as I like to say, you know, and, and so, yeah, I think that's my kind of thing that I always say is like, we've got to stop looking out into space and just look down to what's underneath our feet, because that's what excites me is that the more we go down this path and like you said, universities are jumping on it. Research labs are now starting to actually fund a lot more of the research of the links between soil and gut biome. And then, the, you know, the world that that opens up. And yeah, there's, it's just, for me, I sit here going, <clears throat> this is the epiphany. Like for me, I was watching content going, this is not common knowledge. What do you mean? This is like <laughs> hidden behind a paid wall for some, you know, and that's why I was like, got to do a podcast and you know do all this and become an advocate um kiss the ground i did their soul advocate program and that's where i just had all those penny mo penny drop moments of going this is the hope that i've been looking for because you know i haven't been in it as long as you but there was that time where i thought are we heading to doom and gloom and then i discovered soil and i pivoted all my businesses and all my focuses to wake up and serve soil you know and soil became my yeah. avatar to who i'm yeah. serving every day and then humans Good. and the animals and the wildlife get the beneficiary of that. And so it's been really exciting. And I love hearing your energy as you explain that and having those kind of like mind blowing uh, stories. Um, so what was, what's the energy like? Cause you're someone who has been in these rooms for long enough. What was the energy like, you know, 20 years ago and what do you, what's the energy like now? Like when you're in these rooms, <laughs> what are people, how does it feel? Like take our listeners, our soul lovers into that, energy world of Ray Archuleta in these events? Oh, I tell you, Ray, I'll, I'll, I'll take you to a, a, a story in Pennsylvania. My first time when I had my little jars and my little slate tubes, and you, you've seen that if you go on, yeah. in, on, on the, uh, and I'll never forget, I was trepidating. I was shaking my knees I, because everybody, all, everybody in the university or that used PowerPoint. They did, they did this little, and you're in this little conference room and you're talking and you're giving your spiel for about one hour. I'll remember when I first got these yarn jars drilled holes and I put the soil in there, no till versus conventional. And I got the slate tubes. I'll never forget. I was shaking. And I thought I was going to be laughed at. To be honest with you, Ray, I felt like I was just going to be just laughed at. And they said, this guy's an idiot. What is he doing? And I'll never forget the response from this farmer that was in the audience, big old hands, the size of sausages. And he says, he stood up and, and he stood up and he says, you know, that is one of the best talks I've ever heard in my life. And what he did, Ray, it originated because like you talked about, I took and I let the soil speak and I, the soil was speaking and I was kind of the ventriloquist and letting them show this is what's happening and connecting the dots that if I can't get water in, I can't get new waters. If I can't get the water cycle to work, I can't get nutrient cycling. If I can't make the, the water in there, the microbes can't swim in water and they can't produce the stuff. For the, putting all that together, it made the farmers very, very hungry. I think at the early stages, they were starving. I mean, it was amazing. Uh, yes, there was sometimes that, but in general, people were hungry for this, right? I think this was, was, was missing. And today it's still like that. I don't think we understand the, we need millions of teachers. We don't have enough teachers. So I think that energy is still there. And, and, and to be brutally honest, I think we're less than uh, one to 3% of the agriculture. We're still a small segment. Regen, I'm talking regen guys who are using cover crops and no-tills and integration and understand the, the, the ecology. 
we're a very small population and, but it's growing so quick. We're having a, uh, there's been a, which since in the last 10 years, there has been a 77% increase in cover crops in the United States. Wow. And that's huge. And we touched the farm bill where they even have in the farm bill soil health. We thought that would never happen. We have Prince Charles talking about soil health. Uh, you know, Gabe's talking to Prince Charles. He's talking all these billionaires, all these millionaires, Ray. It's sexy to be with soil now, you know? And that's why it's so important what you're doing now. It's just, we're just in the early stages of the next hundred years. And I think we're finally getting it. It's crazy to hear you say that we're in the early stages because I feel like I'm someone who jumps onto things early, like tech, web, you know, AI, everything in between. And yet you mm-hmm. talk from 20 plus years of experience and, you know, it, it, there's this kind of excitement, but then also this sadness that, you know, why is it taking so long to change and why have we advanced technology yeah. and phones and so many other things and health and medical, but yet we're not, you know, we don't have this urgency with soil and I feel like we're getting closer and I love the fact that we're yeah. at this early stage, but I kind of want that matrix moment of like, just let's download this into everyone's brain because it will be, yeah. I think, what turns humanity around from a lot of the destructive systems that are that are happening and, and understanding, you know, the, the important way that you said there as well, the water cycles, the mineral cycles, like it is something that needs to move. We can't just stop it or park it in one spot, you know, and demonize yeah. and ban certain things, you know, so um yeah i love i love that um yeah so like i think in regards to your experiment like the the fact that you did this presentation and i'm pretty sure these are the demos that i've been seeing over and over on youtube yeah. i think you know you think of the the most farmers and people who are outside in the yard you know tinkering they're kind of kinesthetic learners you know and this is where i feel like the education system sometimes from a university it's all nice to say the fancy words and the big silent letter you know, words, but then it goes over a lot of people's heads. And I think what you did in that room is you showed the practical side of it and you went, oh, now I get it. I can see that dem- demonstration. Give me that mm-hmm. practical knowledge that I need to take back to the farm. What made you, mm-hmm. are you a kinesthetic learner? Is that why you did that demo that scared you and probably set you up on the, you know, the, the career that you've got now? Because it's your demos that I show everyone. I'm like, you don't understand soil, watch this video. It goes for like six minutes and you'll get the penny drop moment. So what encouraged you to do these demo instead of just death by slideshows? <laughs> well, I, t- I tell you, Ray, I tell you, to, uh, in honesty, it was a collective. You always work in a collective. It's never sometimes in isolation. You learn a little bit from here, a little person here. It's, it's sometimes it's divine providence bringing the right people to you at the right time. It was kind of like... Um, there was a couple of people that came into my life and they said, Hey, why don't we try to do some of these? And then I built upon it. Um, uh, I wish I could remember his name right now. And this time, and I remember he worked for NCAT and, and he was an entomologist and, but uh, he had some early stages of the slate test. And then I built a little infiltration thing and learned a little bit here, learned a little bit here, borrowed from here. And, and, and we just did it as a collective but I, I was trying to figure out a way. Look, Ray, when you're in an audience, you got about five minutes whether you're going to connect with the audience and why should they listen to you? You made a very profound statement even before we started. People, about 25 or 30 minutes, they're done. And, and if you cannot connect with them and, so, and, and address this number one thing, why should I listen to you and what benefit am I going to get? And that's the reality. The reason you have a show and people come to it because they're benefiting from you. They're learning something that will change their life and the information means something. So I think that's what, it it was just a manner of learning, uh, teaching techniques. And you said something else very nice that you can't talk at people and talk down at them. Uh, Teach them. And I learned the best teachers in the world were storytellers. Mm. So you bring a story but you also bring the science with it. I think sometimes we think that we're talking to some other technical robot that you're going to download the chip and they're going to just absorb everything. Humans don't learn that way. Uh, it's, data is cool, but they don't change because of data. They're yeah. changed because they're inspired 
or because they have need. There's many things, but it's not data. Yep. Agreed. You know, there's a quote somewhere, I'll probably butcher it, but it's like people will, you know, forget what you said. They won't remember what, um, oh, sorry, they'll forget what you said. They won't um, recall what you showed them, but they will always remember how they made, how you made them feel, you know? And it's like, that's why I think, you know, in that room, you had slideshow, slideshow, slideshow. Oh, practical, it's different. Oh, refreshing. You know, and people take away from that so much more. Um, and, yeah. you know, that's, you know, with a lot of the webinars during COVID, you know, we downed a lot of our tools and we we turned to Zooms and, you know, we ran a summit over, the, you know, the first wave of, of lockdown and everyone was just desperate to do something different to take their mind away from, you know, what was on the news and the media and, you know, creating spaces like that where people feel safe, secure, they can talk, they can voice. Um, and, you know, I think over the years with what you've set up, you've definitely done that as well. You've mentioned before that you've traveled around to six different continents over the last year. You, are you doing more travel? Like what's, where, where are you trying to bring the, the, the message of soil to next? It was interesting. I have been a United Arab Emirate. I was consulting with, uh, with, um, Alejandro Carrillo, as I call him, the rainmaker of the Chihuahuan Desert, where he's turned the Chihuahuan Desert back into prairie, which I thought I would never see. You know, I got to go back in a spaceship in time, right, to go to a ranch and see what the original Spaniards saw when the West came. So I've been there. I've been going to Africa, uh, Uganda. I was in Africa. I just got back from Spain, um, Estonia. 480 people showed up at the talk, uh, wow. Rick Clark and I, and then Spain for a week, and then uh, Venezuela, Colombia, Guatemala. Uh, it's just Mexico. It's just gone crazy. And then wrapping it up here in Australia. And it's all about what we're going to talk about in Australia. It's about freedom farming, about giving farmers hope of getting away from the chemicals and the fertilizers, giving them so that they can make money. And, and um, giving them hope and freedom from the bank, freedom from the government, freedom from everybody else. And, and so that's what uh, gives people uh, a lot of hope. In fact, uh, going to Guatemala, uh, the reason they asked me to come because they saw Kiss the Ground documentary. That documentary had over 10 million views, number six on Netflix, and had over a billion impressions. So it had a huge impact in my career because I didn't even think that was ever going to come to fruition, to be honest with you, Ray. And yeah, it did. No, I agree. Yeah, because, you know, when I first came into the soil space, I was working with Farming Secrets, Helen and Hugo, very similar to you being in the industry for a while. And you know, everywhere they went, there was a wall. It was like, this isn't getting funded. No one wants to listen to this. This kind of, you know, soil health research is getting closed down by big farm, big chem and it felt really like if you said the wrong thing, you'd have the wrong person knocking on your door. And now we've kind of done a backflip on that. And I think, you know, that whole freedom, you know, the freedom, because I think a lot of farmers had this feeling of like, I know I'm not, it's not working. Like everyone always did the best they could with the knowledge they had leaning on the experts that they were leaning on. Mm. Um, no one woke up and said, let me go and ruin my farm today you know, but everyone <laughs> did it with the right intention, you know, and it just That's right, Ray. 20 years and it's like soil yeah. is depleted. And then people start joining the dots and go, Oh, you want my soil to lack this so you can sell me more of that. And people like kind of bringing that power back to themselves. And I guess the thing is that people are asking better questions or they're, you know, that we have the access to information and go, Oh, there's this research who funded it. And I think that's what kissed the ground did. They created this amazing documentary that when you look behind the scenes it is all amazing change makers it's not funded by a, a particular group that might have a biasness or you know it's it's really funded with the the authenticity to just tell the story you know even their soil story yeah. on youtube that people can watch it's like a 10 minute animation video thing that you can watch that leaves some people into tears to go why have i not not mm -hmm. known of this why have i not cared about this you know and that's just changing, getting goosebumps just thinking about it, you know. So that's mm -hmm. the change that's happening here, and it's really, really uh, exciting. So, lovers, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about your visit to Australia. So stick with us. Sure. 
Hey there, Saw Lovers. Hope you're enjoying today's episode, but I wanted to interrupt the program to let you know of an amazing event that is happening in our own backyard in Australia, in Victoria. In March, Ray Archuleta is coming for the first time for his Australian visit. And thank you so much to Soil Restoration Farming and the team there for organising an amazing, fully submerged event around soil. What's better than one Ray on the Regen Ray Show here is two Rays, because I'm also going to be there joining Ray Archuleta. I won't be on the stage, I'll be in the audience just soaking up the wisdom but it'll be awesome to get to meet you guys if you're coming along let me know but this conference I think is by far one of the best things that is lined up there are also other speakers attending so go and check out soilrestorationfarming.com.au click the big Ray Archer letter photo for his event it goes from the 5th of March which is a Tuesday to Friday the 8th of March there are conferences there are master classes there are other speakers there's a dinner there's lots of events for you to really get your mind into the world of soil and really understand Understand it better. I remember watching videos of Ray on YouTube and I really knew that he explained things really well. His demonstration videos of doing like water infiltration and you know soil runoffs and you know lots of different in the field experiments. His videos really fast tracked my understanding of the power of soil. So you now in Australia have the ability to be in the room with the right people to deepen your relationship and your understanding of soil. So there is no better time now than at the start of 2024 to start start your regenerative journey or to better understand your connectivity to soil. This is for anyone who really wants to better understand, you know, soil, the nutrient density of food, the way that we manage our land, rejuvenate our land, and really to get, you know, the power of agriculture back into the power of us, the commons, the people, us who are eating the food that is, is produced. And there's always been this known that the more people who demand a better quality food system, the more that people will do it. And I think this is the opportunity for you to really get around the amazing content that is going to be covered over the two-day conference and the two-day masterclass. Like there is no better room than this room to be in in March. There's no coincidence they call him the soil guy. You know, he's been advocating this from the early, early days of making sure that everyone in America better understands soil. And now he's coming to our backyard, which is which is really excited. So go check out soilrestorationfarming.com.au. I will be there the first two days during the conference. So if you're coming along, do let me know. There are different packages and different prices for whatever fits your budget. Budget. So check out the website soilrestorationfarming.com.au. I will see you at the Ray Archuleta Conference in March. Until then, let's get back to the show. Welcome back, Soul Lovers. You're hanging out with two Rays because two Rays are better than one. Regen Ray and Ray Archuleta. We're talking all mm -hmm. things soil and no wonder why they call you the soil guy because everything you've been hanging around with is, is about soil. But you are coming to Australia, which you alluded to uh, just before the ad break. And... I want to know a little bit more, like what is your goal with coming to Australia? Like, have you seen that there is a lot of curiosity here in Australia? Do you feel like there's some gaps in what we know here that hasn't translated over from, you know, the other parts of the world? What, what made you pin Australia on your trip? And what are some of the things that people can take away after hanging out with you for nearly a week? I was very fortunate to meet some of the beautiful people of Australia. Uh, I think they're just an amazing group of people. I love their spirit of adventurous. I mean, to live in Australia, uh, a continent the size of the United States and only have 35 million people, you have to have a group of people that love to live out there. And I grew up in the West. <laughs> I grew up in a dry environment. I grew up in New Mexico. I, I can have a, a great appreciation for Australia, but um, you have some really sharp people in Australia, like Dr. Christine Jones. I think about... Um, uh, uh, Walter Yenin and um, uh, there's a good friend named Ben Smith and Martin who's one of the uh, uh, Martin and so there's just some brilliant, brilliant people in Australia calling size uh, people that I've heard and, and I think Australia's got some incredible leaders and you know and what you're doing Ray I think what I'm seeing is this synchrony going on as a collective, not only in Australia, but in the United States and parts of the world where they're saying there's this amazing convergence where, hey, we're going to change the world. We're going to heal the planet. And um, it's exciting. So uh, what I'm going to bring there is 30 years of experience from the, you know, like, a, again, I started my career as an engineer technician, was an irrigation specialist. 
uh, irrigation and agronomist, a nutrient specialist, uh, soil health specialist for the last years of my career. But I've been in every state. I've been in every state in the union, from Puerto Rico to Hawaii and all that. And what I'm going to share is the the information, the knowledge that I've learned in the last 30 years and the, and the people that have inspired me. But I'm kind of like a conduit of information of years and years of being exposed to the right people, reading the right books, and helping the landowner. My goal to come is to share and to learn. It's a two-way street, right? It's not... Uh, I, I never want to come off and say, oh, well, I have the ray of the soil guy. No, 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 no. I come <laughs> to learn too. It's kind of like yeah. we learn from each other. And and I'm just excited culturally to meet the Australian people. I've been exposed to the Australian people. They're fun. Uh, they're direct. I, I just think that's going to be great. I think that's what I want to bring. I want to be in a, a two-way street of learning from each other. That's what I'm going to bring. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's uh, beautifully said because that is definitely, you know, the way that symbiosis kind of works is it goes both mm-hmm. ways and you in the room and you know, you're there to bounce ideas off each other, lift the vibration, like share stories, sit around a campfire. Um, and so the event is called Ray Generate 2024. It's hosted by soil restoration farmers. It's, in March, you know, the, the early days of March, there will be links around the video. So all you saw March 5th is- and 6th. Yep. March yeah. 5th and 6th. And then the masterclass is 7th and 8th. Yep. And in the masterclass is where I take you into the field and we really get into giving you a framework on, on how to evaluate your, your home, your own farm and your own operation and bring new technology. We have, I think what we have ahead is we have a soil test that is new technology that is biomimicry based on biomimicry. So what is biomimicry? Mimic life. In fact, I tell the listeners, if you ever get a chance, go on the website called Biomimicry Institute. And pretty inspiring. I love it. Biomimicry Institute has this little tiny phrase that says, ask nature. (laughs) And so what does that mean? It's kind of like, it's like saying, like you and I were talking, right? It's a form of humility and science that says, hey, why don't we ask nature how she does it? Mm-hmm. Instead of our arrogant uh, uh, way of approaching things, force it, control it, manipulate it. Instead, it's like this form of science that's humble. Let's ask nature how she does it. I love it. That's what I get excited about. Yeah, I love that. And there's so many evidences. Like the one that pops into my mind is Velcro. Like Velcro... Yeah, you know the two tapes are stick together with the hooks and 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 loops. Is literally like taken from how seeds that get stuck on your socks work. You know, it's like when we zoom out and see the many parts of the whole, we can see that yeah. a lot of the solutions that we've come up with on as as humanity have been a derivative of nature. And I think sometimes we see those dots afterwards where we've you know we feel like we've created this really amazing building and we go, hang on, nature did that you know, with the shell curve, you know, in the ocean, you know, and it's like, we yeah, thought, we were clever, yeah. but it's always it's linked back to some geometry in nature or the way that nature does things with layers and, and stuff. So it's always cool. But yeah, Velcro is always the one that sticks in my head as something that we've created. It's, it's been super it's, useful, but yeah, it's, mimic, it's yeah. cockle bear. It comes from the cockle bear seed. Like you said, right. from cockle bears, we call them cockle bears. And, and I said, I make, a, I make fun. I say, you know what the name of that scientist his name is billionaire. And so I get people to laugh because, you know, or we learned how to fly biomimicry or, uh, I mean, you could just pick, uh, now they're making, sh- uh, swim, uh, uh, diving suits out of shark skin or figuring out, uh, how nature cleans is herself or how water comes up from leaves or now they're mimicking trees so that when you create pipelines in your, in your office buildings, instead of going in elk shirt, 90 degrees or 45, it's shaped like a, the, the truncation, the, the leaf of a bacon to bigger, smaller, and smaller, just like a leaf veins. And that's called through fractals. Wow. So all kinds of that stuff is we're learning through biomimicry. And it's really cool. I get excited yeah, about, I love sorry that. about that. 
No, awesome. That's what we're here for. We're here to geek out about all these stuff and, you know, make it make sense to everyone who's a soul lover listening. Uh, so can't wait to hang out with you in the room. The links to those tickets will be around this video. Um, and I'm sure most soul lovers uh, have already got their tickets because I've been talking about it for weeks now. So um, yeah, really excited that uh, you are coming to Australia and we finally get to hang out with you and, and see that. For the soul lovers who can't join you, what's something that you really want to kind of download into their brain today during this conversation? Like what's something that they can take away with them? Something practical, keep in their back pocket, you know, in the back of their mind that they can walk through the planet and say, I know this now because I heard it on a podcast. I think one of the most important things is that, the, Ray, I will tell you the biggest struggle that most people have farmers and ranchers and humans in nature. I mean, humans just in general, we're the biggest struggle. I am the biggest struggle. 99% of my, is my mindset. The way you look at life, it's your filters, your paradigms and how you evaluate the world. Uh, because it's so easy to get distracted. There's so much information everywhere. Everybody's just like, let me give an example. COVID was a, was a perfect example. I, I was kind of dismaying how people became very sheepish and how they followed the government and they followed everything. They, they, well, and everybody threw this huge mantra. Well, I follow the science. I'm telling you, Ray, I think you should get a t-shirt in which you put it says, I trust in science and then go dot, dot, depending who paid for it. And it, it just makes Correct. me realize 100%. be careful how you extrapolate science. If science is asking the wrong question, just because it's science, it's not always correct. Let me give an example. A majority of our agriculture, our modern world is based on science. It is. The industrial complex is science. But science asking wrong questions. Today, I want your listeners to say, ask the science of humility. Asking this, how does nature do it? How does the human body heal itself? How does the soil heal itself? What? Ask nature. It's then it's wisdom. That's wisdom. And you can't be, you can't get wisdom unless you have humility. And then it's, it's, it's wisdom from above. You can't get it at school. You can't get it in university. You can't even get it from your friends. You can't learn that in school. So the first thing I always ask now when I extrapolate science, one, does it glorify the design, nature's design? Does it glorify the human body's design? Is it the right approach? Is it the right molecules? Or are they man-made molecules? And by the way, who's paying for it? You start putting that together, it gives you a framework on how to extrapolate uh, how what's coming across. And three, you got to also remember the power of social conditioning. Humans are very, I raise sheep and humans are like sheep. It's like a flock will hang around and, 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 and if they have one sheep outside, that's maybe by itself, it'll kill itself and jump the fence just to be with the other. I'm going to tell you, regenerative agriculture is by yourself a lot. And you have to be, not be afraid. You don't have to be with the rest of the flock because the flock might be wrong. Regenerative agriculture is sometimes you are by yourself. You're the only person in the community. And to have confidence that you're basing your understanding on a very humble science, the, the science that the creator set out. That's what I want people to walk away. Trust, not even me. If I am not, if I'm, if I am not expressing the science of humility and how to approach nature and how to do it from her perspective, don't even bother. Uh, that's what I've learned in 30 some years. Uh, be careful where you get your science from. Love that. I literally feel like I'm talking to Amira because I say that all the time in my podcasts, uh, in my presentations at the end, I say, now believe nothing I said, go do your own research, go down your own rabbit yeah. holes, share what you learned back yeah. at me. Because yep. while we, I say we, because I, I know you're on the same page, our mouthpieces to this information or where to look, how to think of things. It's not until the person creates that curiosity mind to go and look for it for themselves. I think, as you say, we are herd mentality is just to, oh, well, that's what everyone else was doing. 
And I think that's a really big trap. And the other thing that scares me right now is this whole cancel culture stuff. Yes. It's like, well, I better not ask the wrong question because I might get canceled. And that's really created a lot of fear for people to look at the other side of the coin. I always say coins have three sides, you know, the, the heads, the tail and the edge. And so the edge is where a lot of the information really sits. Um, and we, we need to have permission to go, I'm not left. I'm not right. I want to know both sides of the story. I'm not up. I'm not down. I'm in the middle and be okay with that. You know? And I think that, you know, my catchphrase this year is unqualified and curious because everyone's always like, what's your qualifications? It's like the fact that I don't have a qualification is what's led me to be so curious around this soil space. And I can ask those questions, look from a different angle, not coming to the show with these words that not even I know how to spell, <laughs> you know, and looking at how smart I am because I have a PhD or whatever, but it's like just being curious and asking those questions. And like you said, who funded it and what are they trying to look at? Because for every research of proof that this is blue, there is data that proves that it's red, but it sits in the bin because it didn't match the hypothesis. So it doesn't mean that it's yeah. not red. It's just that that didn't make the data set because it's not what the person was looking for. And so you could fund the same research on both ends of the outcome and get true data. And so that's, um, you know, where science, you know, science is now about who's funding what, not, you know, being, uh, you know, I call it, <clears throat> what was I saying in a podcast the other day? It's like the, um, so the person tinkering in the shed, You're like no one's tinkering in the shed anymore because they're waiting to get funded by some lab to then do their research, you know, and it's like, mm -hmm. we need more backyard lab tinkering, mad scientists funds. You know? Yep. You're right. And I'll tell you one thing, Ray, I will tell you, you do have qualifications. You know what they are? You care. Yeah. You think, and I'd rather be well-read. Let me tell you, just because I went to eight years of university doesn't mean I was well-educated. I'd rather be well-read than well-educated. You can go get a good education, but read the wrong books and come up with wrong conclusions. So it, it, I think you got to think and you got to care. That's plenty of qualifications. I don't think you need all the letters. In fact, sometimes they get in your way. Yeah. And I, I've gone to a point that what I really appreciate, I appreciate the scientists that worked really hard and wrote things down so that I can learn, so I can teach. So for all those scientists that did that, thank you very much. People that wrote books like this thick on soil ecology or wrote the textbooks on soils or, uh, uh, you know, that, thank you. So that I can also give a clear understanding of something. But again, at the end of the day, it's going to change. And I think we forget that science is dynamic. It's not fixed. We still don't have a lot of things. We still don't know how gravity works completely. We still, we're, quantum physics and quantum mechanics is changing everything around. So I think people need to just chill out, you know? Yeah, yeah. And also just sit with your intentions and what feels right, you know? I think that one of the things that I learned with regenerative farmers is it just felt like the right thing to do. That's the answer yeah. that they, they say. There's like, there's no method to the madness. There was no, you know, or it comes from crisis of like some massive event has happened. We've lost everything you know, you're anti-fragile and you've got nothing to lose. So you go, Meh, I'll try this thing that others have been saying. And that, you know, that, that being at rock bottom with nothing to lose has given them permission to trial something that's a little bit more crazy. And then they become the pioneers and the, you know, the gay Browns of like multiple, you got you know, it, you know? Yeah. And you got it, size is the same, you know, fire burning yeah. out, you know? And so I think we need to be a little bit, smarter to put ourselves in positions to go, what if I had nothing to lose before I had nothing to lose, you know, and what would I do if it felt like the right thing to do and sit with that? And I think soil has definitely made me be a lot more connected and at one with that more spiritual world, if you really want to call it that. But when there's all these kind of energies, and even like you said, we don't even really know how gravity works, but we're not sitting here saying gravity doesn't exist just because we don't oh, no, really understand how it works, you know? Oh, yeah, I'm not going to jump up. A, oh, it doesn't work. Blah. No, that's being stupid. But uh, you bring something very beautiful. I think I want to touch real quick before you go to your next 15-minute phase of asking questions, I think, uh, is, you know, it was people. We have a saying, Gabe and I have a saying, it says, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. I think we need to understand when we go teach, the recipient, there has to be a recipient that's ready and the teacher 
the communication in a way. And it was those times of desperation, right? We're here because we saw failure. Uh, Gabe did. And, and Gabe will say, yeah, because we were the big mouths and we were just so excited and we realized we screwed up. But all of us came to this convergence of humility that we failed and we didn't have it right. And it's okay to have it wrong. It's okay. We're, we're human. And I think that's the, the first step of really changing your heart and mind is I was wrong. And I think that was what really helped me a lot in my journey. So I think that's, I think it's important for people to understand that. That's another thing they can really take away. It's a, this is a journey for the rest of your life. And it's a journey of humility. And you will learn forever. And you're, you're never going to have it all. Agreed. You're not going to have it. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the saying, be the change you want to see, uh, is something that I've always sat with. Um, but then I also rephrase that to be the change that you're happy to never see, you know, because sometimes it's about going on a course that you won't see the results of your labor. You know, I think of this as a lot with artists, old artists, never saw their success. They died failures. You know, their art wasn't yeah. good enough. Then they die and it goes multimillionaires. But they were never here to experience it, but they never stopped painting. They still painted um, and left all these oh. pieces that then became very valuable. You know, and I think we need to live in this world where success gets rebranded, that it's for the change that you never see, you know? So that's something that sits with me. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's a valid point, Ray. I think we don't understand success is me when, when I see a farmer, when a, when a farmer gets it, Ray, and you're teaching and the light goes on and he applies it, that's beautiful. To me as a teacher, I get so excited. We're all teachers. We're all students. But when that light goes on and they come to me and says, Ray, I say you helped me save my farm. I said, no, 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 you did it. I'm just a conduit. So those are <laughs> things that make, make your day. I think that's what makes me continue to go. And I'm exhausted. I'm in that airplane and I'm in this flying K for confined animal feeding operation that has wings and they stick humans in there and you fly for hours and I hate it. And I'm going to do this to Australia. I'm going, Oh, I'm just not looking forward to the flight. But then <laughs> I get to see people like you, Ray and your audience. It's going to be worth it. Amazing. Amazing. Ray, are you ready to become the voice of the soil? Yes. I will tell you, I will tell you what I would say as the voice of yeah. the soil. Let's do it. So you have it become was, it, the soil. You are embodying its energy. You are its mouthpiece, Ray. You are the soil. What do you say? I would say, I'm alive. Feed me. It's simple. I'm alive. I'm as just as alive as you are. I'm alive. And I, that's one of the biggest struggles I have convincing farmers. It's alive mm -hmm. and, and my feed me and my mouth is the plant. Mm. It's pretty simple. I'm alive. Put a mouth on me, the plant and feed my array of life. I'm alive. The biggest thing I still realize that farmers do not believe it's alive. It's a geological matrix for plants to put in there. Mm. I mean, really alive, Ray. It's alive. Oh, I it's get the it. most I complex it. ecosystem. <laughs> you get it. You know it. So that's what I would say. I'm alive. I'm alive. Treat me well. I'm alive. Don't beat me up. And that's what I would say to him. Yeah, I'm sure you've that. heard. You've had this. You you probably had the same kind of from other people too. Yeah, there's all different types of answers to this question, and it's very much a heart question and not a head question that is underprepared and people just kind of wing it. Um, and that's what I love about it is it's meant to be that authenticity of what just pops into your mind or your heart at that moment. And um, it's, yeah, it's like, for me, that moment was when I put soil under a microscope and it was just moving and wiggling. And, and I'm like, what, you know, the same way as we yep. take blood biology and put it under a microscope and there's all these things happening and we don't know how that works, but we still classify ourselves as a living being and so if the soil yep. has the same things happening under a microscope then it has to be alive it is alive there's no question about it do you remember do you remember that I, I don't know if you're old enough to remember this right there's a movie the frank the old frankenstein movie 
One of the I'll first Frankenstein movies. Oh my God. And I'll never forget it. And I think he played, uh, he's the one that played on, uh, 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 Willy Wonka and the chocolate factory, but he, I think he was the same actor. And he says, and he puts that electricity into that monster. And then and all of a sudden, it's a lie. And that's what the passion I think about the soul. It's alive. And I mean that it is alive. And I think, and I think that's the, uh, the message I try to get farmers to understand because once you really understand Ray, it's really alive and you got to take care of it. Your management will change. Yeah. You'll treat it differently. Shift. That's all right. That's right. Yeah. No, that's right. No, the mindset, that's, that's what you speak about before. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, I say this all the time, like as well as like, is if like with a lot of farmers have livestock above the ground and they wouldn't just go and put, a tray of poison for them to go and eat, you know, but yet we do yeah. that with the soil as a byproduct yeah. of trying to solve a problem, you know, and then realizing that the soil is speaking to us like that plant that is there that you don't want it, you're spraying a chemical to remove. The soil is basically screaming a signal to you to say, I'm growing this plant because I have this problem. And yet we just kill the plan and never solve the actual cause, you know? And so it's like, mm -hmm. You know, like you said, what what is nature trying to teach us? What would nature do? You know, how would nature solve this problem? You know, and so just sitting with that, I think is is an awesome takeaway that uh, all the soul lovers can can take. Before we wrap this up, any final words, thoughts, ideas that you just must get off your chest and share to? The yeah, audience? one of the things I want people to walk away to, Ray. I want you to. There's two things I want them to think about: the plant and soil are one. They're not separate units because if you take the plant out. You take soil biology out. If you take soil biology out and you've got no plant biology, you have geology. I think they need to understand. I think we've taught soil wrong. That soil is that interface between geology and that living of life, that skin, that beautiful living ecosystem. That's, that's what I want people to walk away. I want them to understand the moment you pull a plant out of that soil, it's no longer one. Our job is to make it one again. That's why I was saying the ancient people had this beautiful thing. The plant is the mouth of the soil. It's yeah. it's a very, very powerful. Number two, I, I think one of the best things that people can do in further soil is go to a school, inform yourself, start reading the right books. Because if you do not understand a basic concept of how souls are working. You will hurt yourself financially. Um, you will go broke and, and, and you're never going to free yourself. Be well read. Mm. Do these, uh, listen to these podcasts that you're creating and these people like yourself that are the guy and leading people to the right direction, right books, right information. The last thing, Work in a community. Don't do this by yourself. And I'm going to stress that in Australia, if you work by yourself, you will die by yourself. This is very complex. I tell get, work with four or five people in a community of farmers. Because if you do it by yourself, you say, look, I would say you're in your 30s and 40s, right, Ray? Yep. Right? 30s, yep. Say you got, maybe get the good Lord gives you 50 more 50 more opportunities, fences, not years. It takes a whole year to find out what you did was correct or not, or you made me take it a little longer. My point is, if you got five or six of working in a community, then you got five years of research in one year. Yeah. You changed a lot of things. Don't work by yourself. And I think I want people to walk away, and I'm going to really push that. Start working in the community of follow regenerative producers, even if it's in the phone, communicate, don't work by yourself. Don't, yeah. don't do that. Your, your neighbors are your, they're, they're not your competition. The world is really embrace community work as a collective. It's too complex. It'll take you forever. Yeah. Uh, second that hundred percent. Um, the education system, unfortunately does teach people to you know, do it alone. You know, you can't help that neighbor because yeah. that's cheating. You know, and so we need no. to get all that and go, your, your neighbor should be, you know, that, that's, I think that's what's happened now is that a lot of people who are struggling on farms are going, 
why does Bob and Mary's farm next door look so green? What are they doing? And they're being curious yes, and they're yes. asking that question and they're like, oh, you're doing that biodynamic thing. How come you never told us? Because every time I told <laughs> someone I was doing biodynamic, you called me some hippie woo-woo person, <laughs> you know? And so- Oh yeah, you think that? Own. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, are you, uh, what, uh, are you smoking cover crops? Are you doing drugs? Come on. Biodynamics? Yeah, come on. And by the way, for those who think that biodynamics is strange, uh, quantum physics, quantum mechanics is saying, no, 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 no. Things are entangled. Things are much more elegant happening in the metaphysical realm than we ever imagined. Yeah. But we had a lot of things wrong. Oh, by the way, the Native Americans weren't that crazy. Things are alive. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, so things are changing, right? And it's yeah. awesome. The science is the, tr- the science is trying to catch up. Mm. But who cares? For me, it's like, if it, just do the right thing. You know, my grandparents always planted by the moon. I want to know why. It's just full moon. We're planting this today. You know, it's like people go, that's crazy. But hang on, the moon moves all the water and changes the tides. How is that crazy? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the water tables are changing. The pool to the earth is different. It's like these things matter when you zoom out and go, oh, maybe it does. There is something, you know, that is happening that we haven't learned how to measure yet, which is cool. Yeah. It's kind of like I was listening to this little cool thing is that the sun pulls the gravity and the moon pulls from this gravity and causes the oceans to go like this, <laughs> to flux. And, and, and I said, wow, I didn't think about that. In, out, you know, and, 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 the, and the moon, and then they cancel each other out when they both are parallel, but the moon has a big factor. The sun has a big factor. We're learning so much that I, you know, I realized, guess what, Ray? I don't know anything. So I'm going to, uh, I think, I think the last message we can leave our audience, I know nothing. And I hope that I always have that attitude because I always want to learn something new. Yeah. Love so, it. Perfect way. Perfect way to wrap up this conversation, Ray. Thank you so much for hanging thank out you. and sharing all your soul wisdom and your passion and your love and your beautiful smile. If you haven't been watching the video, make sure you check out the video version on YouTube because it's energy, you know, the way that you're, you know, there's moments in the conversation where you come closer to the camera and the screen. And I think that just, you know, is testament to how passionate and on the edge of this, your seat you are to get here to Australia. Yeah. Uh, you can't help it. You can't help it, Ray. I think you're the same way. Is that when you love land and love the people and you love the creator and the creation, you can't help lose it out. And that's why I think we're going to go and do it in Australia. We do have some fun and I'll let you buy all the liquor. Cause I'll just kind of, you know, I, I want you to do that. No, I'm just <laughs> we'll have fun and have a couple of, a couple of uh, good microbial byproducts like beer. Yeah. It's fermented. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, let's have some fun. And so thank you for having me and, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in um, Australia on the, on the fifth and sixth, and then the the class on the master's class, the seventh and eighth. Yes, absolutely. And it's in Victoria for those who are listening and local. And if you're not in the state like me in New South Wales, get your butt into Melbourne and Victoria. Uh, it's only you know about an hour out of Melbourne and a beautiful venue. And uh, can't wait to regenerate with you, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Regen Ray and Regenerate. Yeah. Too many <laughs> alliterations going on. <laughs> Love that. Ray Easy Cubed. Oh, There's good. Yes, that's it. Ray Cubed. We can take a photo and post that. Up. Excellent. Well, there you go, soul lovers. That's uh, Ray Archuleta. Just finally, how can people hang out with you more? Like, I think just go Google your name and uh, go onto YouTube. Yeah. But is there somewhere you want to send people to, you know, hang out with you? Uh, I, I, a couple of more months, I will have my my website up and then we're going to have all the videos kind of lined up and stuff like that. But I think you you hit it. Uh, go to the best university in the world called YouTube University. Yeah, That's where I like to go. Because I think you meet some of the most brilliant, great talks, TED Talks. Those are the kind of things you can connect people with. right? And, and of course, listening to podcasts like yours. Yeah, love that. Perfect. There you go, Soul Lovers. Ray has told you to go listen to the podcast. Make sure you're sharing it with all your friends, family, people who are not Soul Lovers yet. We're on a mission to convert them into Soil Lovers for the uh, life of humanity and to get those more aha moments happening. Ray, thank you so much for coming on to the show. It's been an absolute delight having you here and geeking out about soil. Thank you, Ray. Appreciate you and you have a good evening, okay? I will. Thank you. And you too. Well, there you go, soul lovers. Until next time, make sure that you get outside, get your hands dirty and keep digging deeper into the wonderful world of soil. Until next time, I'm Regen Ray.
Well, soil lovers, that's enough secrets for one episode. I really hope that you enjoyed all the secrets shared during this conversation. But hey, let's not keep it a secret. Please share this podcast around and make sure that you like it and leave us a review because that really helps spread the secrets of the soil. Until next time, remember, get outside, get your hands dirty and keep digging deeper into your soils.